people ask us what they can do for the country what would be your advice to such people voluntary service is something that uh, art of living is big gone we have rejuvenated about 75 rivers and thousands of water bodies where water table had gone down 200 feet 270 feet has now come up you know 10 feet 12 feet they are able to get water do you think that ai will somehow become a guru in the future <laughs> It is for the disciple to make someone guru or not. Right. What happens after death and how do we prepare for it? The so-called life what we live hmm. is only tip of the iceberg. The rest is all hidden and that's where meditation comes. When you meditate, new dimension opens. When the prisons are overflowing with thousands, they only gave nine prisoners and a cellar room which was so dark and had a very little window. but then when our teacher went and taught them they found the transformation in those people i was very surprised to see you having a phone so how is your relationship with your phone these days phone is like uh, having water it's just part of your life but you don't need to use it all the time Correct. how do you get two opposing parties on the same table and get them to listen to each other <laughs>
So, what was the first prison in which you implemented this program? I don't even remember <laughs> that now, it's 42 years. We started here in Bangalore, we started. Then in America, I remember for the American continent, Boston, we started. First, they were very reluctant. One of our teachers went, they gave only nine prisoners. When the, <laughs> when the prisons are overflowing with thousands, they only gave nine prisoners and a cellar room, which was so dark and had a very little window and so dusty. But then when our teacher went and taught them, they found the transformation in those people. Then they rolled out to everybody. Okay, uh, the next question is, uh, we are living in this age where uh, global warming, climate change, pollution, these are not just buzzwords, they are reality for all of us. Uh, you work with a lot of uh, governments on this, you consult with them. Are they willing to actually make a difference? Like, do they want to take the steps to yes, change stuff? Yes, many, many, and also especially the bureaucrats in every government, they are also uh, concerned about it. So, they are concerned, but they don't know how to proceed, how to move, how to motivate people. Art of living strength is we are connected with the grassroots pe level people. Second, we have experts, retired engineers, retired officials, who, who have a passion to do something to the society, something to our country, which they couldn't accomplish when they were in the uh, designated post. Those people join us. And then, of course, motivating our teachers are great motivators. They motivate them to take up projects and um, in one tenth of the cost, what would have, what otherwise any government would have spent, uh, people are able to accomplish it because it's car seva, it's a service, you know, voluntary, voluntary service is something that uh, art of living is big on. Yeah, I am just going to share an experience. My uh, father worked uh, very closely with Dr. Paul, who was in Fulton. And that area is in a rain shadow region, so that receives very little rainfall. And then because of uh, the shramdan that all the villagers had did, they built buns uh, to capture all the water on the slopes. And then they were able to have wells uh, filled with water even till April, May. Yeah, even so, now, just now before this meeting, I have met with uh, Jaltar, our uh, river rejuvenation team. We have rejuvenated about 75 rivers and thousands of water bodies. So and these people are sharing their experiences. Where water table had gone down 200 feet, 270 feet, has now come up, you know, 10 feet, 12 feet, they are able to get water. You had a webinar on uh, value education and how it should be a part of education. So, could you tell me a little more about that? What values should we teach the next generation so that we raise a compassionate society? I mean, uh, it's best for all of us to teach good values to children when they are young rather than reform them when they've grown up. No, no, but to um, learn values, age is not a barrier at all. At any age, you can get back because it's already there within. All the positive qualities are inside of you. So, uh, Gurudev, when I came here, I noticed that there was a millet conference over here. Uh, so, th our country, India, has always been a home to many different native crops. I had read that at one point of time, uh, there are we had more than one lakh varieties of rice. So, uh, it's very so. It's how important is it for India to conserve we all of this? We need to save the seeds, and we have opened a seed bank in Ottawa. We are going to the remote villages and collecting the seeds from them and then, you know, restoring them. So, a seed bank of uh, native seeds is what the initiative we have taken up. And organic farming, natural farming. We have trained nearly 3 lakh farmers around the country on natural farming. And its number is increasing every day. Farming is very essential to go back to our roots. You know, our is a Rishi Krishi ka desh hai. So, hum wo sab chhod de. We have forgotten our natural farming system. That's what our 
foundation is reviving among people. Huh? So, new focused more on uh, the sustainability efforts, the different work that Art of Living has been doing. But I am into a completely different mental zone right now because it's the month of December and month of December marks an end to an entire year which makes me very pensive because if you consider our life as calendars and if suppose somebody lives for a hundred years then our life is only this stack of calendars but what happens after that? What happens after death and how do we prepare for it? Certainly, see every month is a good month I tell you our financial year ends in 31st March <laughs> and our new year also, a Hindu new year also starts in March. Hmm. It's the intelligent ones who can see that there is more to life than the routine that we are living. Correct. Life is not just this. We have seen people living life, being miserable or being happy and then one day they are gone. <laughs> Where do they go? What happens? This spirit of inquiry into life seldom comes to people. Only intelligent people, as I said, people are sharp or intelligent or clever. They put their attention on this. As I said, you know, the, the so-called life what we live hmm. is only tip of the iceberg. Correct. The rest is all hidden. And that's where meditation comes. When you meditate, new dimension opens to you. But speaking of life, a lot of times uh, when we think about the things that make us happy and the things that will make us feel accomplished are on two different spectrums, I mean two ends of the same spectrum. So how do we choose? Because uh, certain things give us mental peace, certain things give us the sense of accomplishment. You, how do we balance? You need both. You should do both. Some things you have even, you may not like it, but for your sustenance, your survival, you have to do that. And there are other things which uh, you can do it as a hobby. Hmm. That's why the word hobby. So when choosing a hobby, should we choose a hobby which is something that can turn into a profession or should we just keep a hobby as something that gives us peace of mind? No, it's good if your hobby and profession merges somewhere. But if it doesn't, the, you, you can have both. When I was a child, I did not have a hobby of reading books or playing an instrument. But I used to surf on the internet. But I used to feel ashamed to admit it in the, uh, in the classroom. Because at that point of time, internet was something very new. And people did not know too much about the internet. So, right now, the people who must be in schools, they must be having hobbies that I can't understand. So, do you think it's okay to have hobbies that are different? See, every generation has got different hobbies. You only have to see that you don't get into a hobby which is harmful to you and for others. <laughs> see, there are people have hobby in smoking or... Um, first you take it as a hobby, but then it becomes a habit. Correct. And the habits are really um, restricting the freedom in life. And freedom is something that is most um, dear to anyone. Every living being is very... Um, cherish, uh, always cherishes freedom and habits will take away the freedom. Hmm. Hobbies in the free time, it brings you more joy and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. So habits and addictions are very close to each other. I mean certain things are completely addictive, the substances are addictive. But so something like coffee or consuming coffee is considered very natural. But that can also turn into an addiction. Right now, we speak about scrolling on social media. That has become an addiction. So, how does one put a stop to uh, something turning into an addiction? The moment you realize this has become an addiction and I can't live without you or it is harming my physical, mental, emotional health, hmm. you should move away from it. And if you need help, take help from people. There are people who will counsel you. And yoga and meditation is very good to be centered and get away from many of the addictions. I was very surprised to see you having a phone. So, how is your relationship with your phone? Do see, you use your... Phone, these days, phone is like uh, having water. <laughs> it's just part of your life. Uh, but you don't need to use it all the time. Correct. Uh, I would always recommend people to switch it off 
two hours before you go to bed hmm. and morning don't switch it on before two three hours after you wake up okay and uh, social media or gadgets they are part of your life now we have to admit mm-hmm. it you cannot go back from this you know there are community even in america today they don't want to use electricity can you imagine in the heart of america there are people village they are living without no electricity they will not touch use oh. electricity at all but is there any particular reason for it no the, whatever their belief system is so uh, what i would say is we must live a life which is balanced right now we are in 2023 and this entire year has been about ai the talk of the town has been that every single profession will be replaced by ai i work in the video field and i can see my editors being concerned that editors will be replaced by ai and ai has been guiding us in so many different parts of life do you think that ai will somehow become a guru in the future <laughs> it is for the disciple to make someone guru or not right you can learn from ai no doubt and it is to be used that is also fine for me ai means absolute intelligence there is a higher intelligence not mm-hmm. just artificial intelligence there is a higher intelligence and when you recognize that there is stability there is happiness there is um, sense of oneness and belongingness with everybody in the world and that's most necessary to So for our audience this section is called kya farak padta but right now we'll be doing it in english so i will this is a rapid fire sort of a question so you have to answer only Chali in one na. line ah. so uh, i will say one word and say but why so you can answer meditation but why to be happy uh taking care of nature why it sustains you so sustain sustaining nature sustains us as well okay good sleep why for you to be sane <laughs> uh, a good relationship with your wife why have peace at home <laughs> and uh, last one art of living why uh, to bring all this in your life okay thank you so much gurudev for uh, nice. giving us our time thank you so much for watching this conversation tell us how we can improve we have an email id dedicated so that you can give us feedback if you have any suggestions in terms of which guests we can have next tell us over there thank you so much for watching kyunki aapke support se hame farak padta